What's going on guys? So uh, today <laughs> we're talking about uh, a nice little wallet set up for, you know, post SHTF. Um, if you guys have been watching the, the channel for a while, anyway, the regular viewers, you guys probably remember this thing. This is a speed changer uh, for vendors, mostly. Of course anyone can could buy and use these, I suppose. I don't even know if they still make these, but the idea is this is just a little contraption you can keep on your waist. All right, and uh, you can very quickly disperse change or coins or tokens. In fact, a lot of these used to be used for different types of tokens. So you can see there's these little wings that come out. All right, they have clip on it. So it's a clip onto your belt or your waistband and your pants. And obviously there is a nice little curvature here. Um, these are known as barrels. Okay, this is a four barrel uh, speed changer. Um, I've seen three barrel, four barrel and five barrel. The four barrel is one of the more common ones because we have four different types of coins in American coinage anyway. Uh, quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. However, this one's a little bit unique. Even though I've loaded this with pennies before, if you notice by size here, this is for quarters, this is for dimes, this is for nickels, and this one's also for nickels. At least it's the exact same size. So I'm not sure if, you know, originally you can order these because these are usually vintage things. I mean, you see a lot of them on eBay, all different types of brands um, from like the 20s and 30s and so forth. But um, but yeah, usually there, there's four different sizes there. Uh, but this happens to have two for nickels. And I was kind of looking at it today and uh, it made me think of like SHTF and using constitutional silver or American silver coins for our money. And the fact this has two nickel ones, I thought it'd be cool to load it up. With a bunch of constitutional because you'd have two tubes for your uh, silver war nickels all right so how this contraption works again it would be on your waist there and you can just reach down and hit these levers to quickly disperse your coinage there's three dimes and i did all mercury dimes here just so that they're easily recognizable since roosevelt dimes obviously are clad as well as silver depending on what years but yeah it's just kind of cool so you know you're uh, walking around the wasteland <laughs> and you want to barter with someone they say all right well i have a i don't know a case of ramen noodles what's that gonna cost you one silver quarter all right cool there you go there's your silver quarter now if you look in here you can see that there's kind of slots cut out so you can see about how many coins you have left um this probably holds about 50 i have uh 25 quarters 25 dimes and i want to say like maybe 19 and 18 for nickels uh so you can see it holds quite a few more i would probably guesstimate about 50 of each coin um some of the five barrels uh, actually have a separate spot for uh, game tokens or what are called game tokens which are slightly larger than the quarter size uh, but obviously you know in the, in the case of like maybe a carnival or the circus or something like that and there's some different types of games uh, you would obviously fill that with just you know those types of tokens whatever it happens to fit when you buy these vintage a lot of times people don't even say what the slots are for because they could really be for anything, even if your regular, you know, pocket change can fit in there. And then like the three barrels usually won't have a penny. So it'll just be quarters, uh, dimes and nickels. And really it just depends on the situation. Now, I think I mentioned when I do my video on this uh, little contraption that I actually saw one of these in use. The only time I've ever seen this was when I visited the boardwalk. I was probably uh, anywhere from maybe 10 to 13 years old, something like that. It's been a long time. Um, but uh, I remember there was that specific game on the boardwalk where they had the the metal wire and you had like a little handle with a, a loop on it or whatever. So the idea is you have to snake it around the puzzle without touching the side. When you touch the side, it would make an electrical connection and it would beep or buzz. So they knew like, you know, as you're snaking it around and trying not to touch it, it would, you know, zzz, and it would go off and then you lost. And if you got it to the end, you'd win those stuffed animal or whatever it happened to be. Now for that machine, because it was old, they actually had a slot that was in the table that took dollar coins, okay? At the time, there were Susan B. Anthony's. So what you end up doing is you take your paper money and you give the woman that was there, you know, regular bills for the Susan B. Anthony's. Because when I went, Susan B. Anthony's weren't really a thing in society. It's not like you just happen to have those in your pocket, but that's what was used to actually uh, set the game up so you can play. So if you wanted five tries, you give her five bucks and she'd give you five dollars back in Susan B. Anthony's and then you slip it into a little coin slot on the table and then it would reset the game so you could play it again. So that's the only time I've ever, ever actually seen uh, one of these in usage, uh, which was kind of cool. Uh, I picked this up at an antique store. I want to say it was like five or 10 bucks, something like that. 
Uh, generally speaking, depending on the age and the brand and all that kind of stuff, you'll see these from like, you know, 20 bucks all the way up to 100 bucks. Just depends on condition and a lot of different factors, I suppose. I'm sure there's people who collect these things just like everything else in life. Um, but yeah, I thought this was just kind of funny. I just loaded it up with silver. So we got a bunch of silver quarters in here. All right. We got silver dimes. Like I said, mercury dimes. All right. And then, of course, some more nickels. If I get my finger out of the way at the bottom, you see dispensing all the war nickels. All right, which is 35% silver. I actually thought it would be kind of cool if um, if they made one that held half dollars and old silver dollars, you know, like the, the Morgans and the uh, Peace dollars. And of course, there's a ton of different uh, silver half dollars, but, you know, I don't think they make that. I did a quick research and I literally couldn't find anything that even held half dollars. They're basically just regular coins and tokens, and the token size is really kind of random. But I don't think it's as large as most uh, half dollars. But yeah, it's just, it's just kind of cool. Like if you had regular change in here, even though this is still very usable change, I wouldn't use it as change since it has silver content. But uh, it's just kind of a cool thing, like for a vendor, uh, whether you're at a festival and you're selling food or again, a game you know, type thing at a carnival or whatever, it's just easy to, to dish out the change. Like let's say you need you know, 65 cents, right? You just reach down, boom, boom, 50 cents, a dime, 60, and then a nickel, five. So you got 65 cents. All right, we can spread that out for you. So it's just kind of cool. It's a cool way to, to speed, disperse, or dispense, rather, your change. And of course, when you have uh, extra coins, you gotta slip them back on top. Okay, so if you accidentally pump one or two out that you didn't need, you can put it right back. So let's talk a little bit about this constitutional uh, money. Um, you know, there's a lot of preppers out there that believe, you know, if society takes a, a crash, you know, we're going to be using this kind of stuff as real money. Now, not for 10 cents, but maybe this buys you a meal, you know, maybe a quarter buys you some ammo, you know, maybe $5 in constitutional buys you a gun. Who knows, right? Um, I've, I've kind of touched upon this subject a little bit in the past. This much of me, just a little teeny tiny part of me, uh, thinks that maybe... Maybe if you happen to be into silver and you happen to understand this stuff's value and you happen to come across someone else, i.e. pretty much another prepper, then yes, I don't totally see that bargaining actually happening. Like I happen to do a little bit of light prepping. I happen to like silver. If society completely broke down and it's just Mad Max, you know, I know a guy who lives somewhat close to me who appreciates silver and I know that I can go to him and give him you know, a couple of these quarters for some goods and vice versa. I would totally accept his silver and gold uh, for different things. But that's just two dudes that are into this stuff. I know all the houses in between me and him probably won't care. And that's the reality. And you see a lot of arguing where people will say like, oh, it's stupid, silver's not gonna be worth anything if society collapses and then you know, vice versa. Oh yeah, totally, it's gonna be you know, the money we use to, to barter and all that stuff. I think it's gonna be a very small percentage. Very few people are gonna understand and put value on this kind of stuff. Uh, the idea really is if society breaks down, I'd still like to obtain and collect all these things, but not for when it's down. The idea is that it, it gets back to normal. That's what we all want. Society might go down for a month, it might go down for six months, a year, five years, who knows? But the idea is to build society back up, okay? So if it's gonna be like Mad Max land for the next 20 to 40 years, I don't think I'm going to care about silver that much. You know what I'm saying? It just really depends on the situation and, uh, and what's actually happening. Um, but even like, let's say America, if America is crashing and failing and the rest of the world is still fine, which they wouldn't be totally fine since, you know, we're a spider web of commerce these days and, and America is very much <laughs> a big part of the world, obviously. So if America crashes, it's not like the whole world's going to crash, but some things will definitely be going down. But I see a lot of people, you know, uh, fleeting away from America, hopping on boats and ships and, you know, who knows what to try to go to other countries uh, where there's still some form of society. And maybe it's something like this that gets you that that boat ride. You know, maybe it's a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold that gets you that plane ticket, you know, to get you and your family out of here. Who knows? That's why I collect the stuff. But I'm hoping society does not break down. I'd rather this, the prices of the stuff, you know, stay low and we can all live our normal lives. But anyway, I thought this would be kind of a, a fun little uh, thing to, uh, to mention. Uh, I could totally picture some, you know, totally dirty, scrungy dude, you know, with uh, two guns on his hip and a, a shotgun and a bandolier, you know, across his back and, 
you know, like a, a tattered leather jacket and some dirty ripped jeans and this thing on his waist next to a giant Bowie knife, you know, and he's like, hey, what do you want for that tire? A couple dimes? Okay. Well, there you go. There's your, your silver for, uh, for your tire. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think. Uh, this is one of those things that just keeps popping up around the house where I just want to get rid of it because I have no use for it. And every single time I, I rediscover it, I want it because it's cool. That's why I originally bought the thing. Uh, does it have a practical purpose? Probably not. Not unless it was like the 80s and it's back at the arcade. You know, if you have four of these tubes filled with quarters or tokens, you know, you just uh, play in Street Fighter and just need a couple more <laughs> to continue your game. That'd be kind of cool. Um, you know, back when I was working the uh, hot dog stand, I think I got this after that. If I got it before it, it was a total miss because I totally could have uh, used this um, dispersing uh, change. But uh, but yeah, it's just, just kind of fun. It's one of those things, like I said, I'm, I'm still going to hang on to it and keep it um, just because it's just kind of strange. <laughs> and I, I like it. I like it for some reason. But today I filled it up with some, some actual money, which I thought would be uh, kind of fun. So yeah, let me know what you think of this and let me know what you think. Uh, you know, post um, SHTF, if people are actually going to be bartering with uh, change, silver change, uh, or if you think it's just total BS and none of your neighbors will care. So just a tiny part of me is hoping to have this stuff for the apocalypse, but most of me is hoping to have this stuff when I'm old and it's worth 50 times face value or 100 times face value. Uh, so, you know, either way, I think it's a win-win. You should definitely find yourself some constitutional silver uh, whenever possible. So anyway, that's all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.